Are you wanting to set up an effective behavior chart for your child? This is part three of a series on how to do just that. The first one talked about how to set up effective goals. The second one talked about reward strategies. And this one is going to talk about what you need to do to follow through effectively to make it work. So one of the things that you need to do to make it work is to give effective reminders. Now, an example of a reminder that's not very effective would be to say something like, stop arguing, you're not going to get your reward on your chart if you keep arguing like that. If I have to tell you one more time, then I'm not going to give you your point on your behavior chart. Now, because, you know, that's sort of nagging and criticizing and clearly probably at that point the child shouldn't be getting their reward on their behavior chart, you know, because of their problem behavior. So what you want to do instead is let's say you know that when you say no, to a child's request that they often say, begin the arguing at that point. So before you say no, and they've just asked you something, you would say, I want to remind you about your chart. Uh, I might say yes or I might say no to this request, but if I say no, what is it that you're supposed to do? And then it can be really effective to have the child go through the steps of what they're supposed to do to accept no. So for instance, to accept no, they might be looking at you saying okay and then moving on. So they've just said out loud what it is that they're supposed to do for their uh, goal of accepting no. And then you say, now you want to sometimes maybe say yes at that point to them so that once you prompt them like that, they don't always know that the answer is going to be no. Uh, but sometimes obviously it is going to be no and then they've rehearsed what it is that they're supposed to do and it might increase the chance that they would do it. Now you're not always going to be able to give reminders uh, for various goals, but it's helpful to do that uh, when the occasion arises. Also, when you're first setting up a behavior chart, another way you can do effective reminders is just look at the chart each morning with your child. Remind them in a positive manner to say, okay, let's look at the chart. What are the things we're working on today and what are the goals and rewards that you can be earning. So those are effective reminders to kind of keep it present in that child's mind about what it is that they're working on and what is it they need to do to be earning their rewards. That's a lot more effective than the earlier example I gave. Okay, another thing that's important on your end as a parent is to rate the child uh, every day. So that, for instance, rather than forgetting about it and two or three days later you're trying to remember, did my child accept no or did my child use kind and polite words on Tuesday and now it's Thursday, uh, part of the process is for you to really follow through and rate your child at least every day. Now, for instance, if you're using a chart uh, like this one, which has different time periods for morning, afternoon, and evening, as you can see on the different colors, then you want to rate them every morning, afternoon, and evening. You want to do it at a time uh, so that the child knows that it's been done. Now, if your child's pretty good at accepting feedback, you may do it with them. Other times it's actually better to do it not in the child's presence, but just to keep the rating for yourself, uh, depending on how they ch the child might do with the rating process. Uh, so, although that could also even be one of the goals, is, you know, accepts uh, feedback or accepts the results from the chart, you know, can be even a goal that you're working on. Another thing that's very important for a reward system to work, and it may sound really simple, but I've known a lot of people who uh, haven't done this piece of it, is you have to give them the reward that they earned as soon as possible. That's just so important because if the child, if you just like, oh yeah, well I'll get that for you later, uh, and the child might know that uh, they may or may not ever get it, they're going to lose their incentive to work on the chart. So uh, it can help to stock up on things that you're going to use as a reward. You need to be able to give it promptly for goals that the child might be working on where they could earn a reward, say, every day. You need to be able to give it to them. Uh, sometimes if your kids are earning money, for instance, and even if it's small amounts of money, like a quarter for each goal, you know, I'll suggest to parents, you know, go to the bank, get a roll of quarters, be ready with that so that they can earn it right then and maybe putting it into a jar where they can really see what they're earning so that they get that immediate gratification, that connection that happens between I met this behavior goal, I earned this reward. 
and even for children who are working on earning something over a period of time. So for instance, maybe they need to earn 25 tokens in order to earn a trip to an arcade, then they're getting those tokens and they're seeing them add up on a, uh, in a jar or they're seeing the check marks adding up on a chart so that they can see that they're close to getting the amount that they need to earn their reward. Another thing that's important is that you never want to give in to negative behavior. So for instance, if you're trying to work on not arguing and then you know, your child is arguing with you uh, and you're saying, you know, if you do it again, I'll mark you down on the chart or something. Um, but then that one time you give in to that behavior and uh, say, give the child what they were arguing with you about even though that hadn't been your original plan, but you were now just giving in based on the arguing. You know, you're kind of messing up your system. You really want to try and stick to the things that you've chosen to work on. You might let other things go that aren't part of your current behavior plan that you're working on with your child, but the things that you've decided to focus on in your reward and behavior chart plan, you really want to try and stick to and very uh, consistently. Uh, the last thing I'm going to throw out there is sort of a bonus tip, uh, and that is when you're working on a behavior plan, I think it's most effective if when the child is working on their goals and their rewards, that if it takes them a shorter amount of time or a longer amount of time to earn what it is that they're trying to work for, that that's okay. The reason I like to mention that is that, for instance, let's say a child's working on school attendance and you set up a plan, well, if you go every day for five days, you earn a trip to the park. Well, if they go four days of that week and not the fifth, uh, then they might uh, lose their incentive to keep working on it uh, if the goal is you've got to have five days to do it and it's in one week. Whereas if you set it up that it's just five days period, then once they get to five days, they earn their reward. That just keeps them working on a goal. Now there are occasions when it's going to be workable to uh, insist that a certain number get met within a certain amount of time. You know, so you'll have to decide that for yourself depending on what you're working on. But in general, just sort of the general principle is that it's going to keep kids motivated if whenever they get to the set number that they need to earn the reward, that they earn it, rather than having to get it all in a short amount of time, or rather having to be sort of perfect in every way in order to earn the reward. So that's just a bonus suggestion on this. So this was part three of a three-part series. There's one on setting goals, a second one on setting rewards, and then this third one on being consistent and following through on the parent end of a behavior chart. So I hope these ideas help with setting up a behavior plan for yourself uh, in your own family. And my name is Barbara Lester. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I work with hundreds of children and adolescents. And if you're interested in more of these kinds of tips, please subscribe to my channel uh, on YouTube, which is ASD Specialist. Thanks for stopping by today.